Hello, and welcome to video five of simple regression analysis. In this video, we'll be assessing the impact of an outlier in our data set. Uh, so the first thing I'll do is run a simple regression uh, analysis again. Go to data, data analysis, regression, press OK. Here's the Y range. Here's the X range. Labels in the first row. Let's show the output right here in E3. And I would like to see uh, standardized residuals. This will help us detect the outliers in our data set. We won't do anything with residual plots at this point. Press OK. And there's my output. Uh, now, rather than uh, taking the time to clean up this output, I'm going to copy from a previous uh, analysis already cleaned up output. So I'll just paste right over it. <clears throat> okay, and then I'll clean out the little stuff that we don't need. Okay, so here's a uh, cleaned up output. And uh, right below this uh, equation, we have the fitted values right here shown. Uh, Excel calls them predicted sales. That's our Y hats. Here's our residuals, the E's. And here's our standardized residuals in standard units. You take the residuals and standardize them. I'll format all of these to two decimal places just so it doesn't look so busy. And then let's uh, rescale the column widths again. Actually, I like to abbreviate standard, standardized residuals so that it's not such a wide column. Okay, and now from this column of standardized residuals, I'm looking for any uh, values at least to an absolute value. So as I scan down, I see right here, that's an extreme outlier because it's at least three standard deviations away from zero. So observation 18, which uh, happens to be this point right there, that particular day had a high temperature of 77 degrees, but only $1,800 in ice cream sales. So it's abnormally low ice cream sales. You can tell by the fitted value, 24.92, compared to the actual value. Uh, so the fit is much higher than actual, and that's why the residual is negative. Uh, we were off by nearly uh, $700, and the standardized residual is, uh, uh, and ex makes it a, an extreme outlier. Okay, so now um, I'm going to run this regression again, and I'm going to take this data and just paste it into a new worksheet. And let's delete uh, these two cells, right? The the outlier point. Right click, delete, shift the cells up. Now I'll run the regression again. Data, data analysis, regression. Now this time we're not looking at the residuals. We don't care if there's some more outliers that show up. So I'll uncheck that. And Y is uh, that column and this is X. Press OK. There's my output. And again, uh, I'll clean this up just a little bit. These are redundant cells right here. It's the same as these cells over there. So I'll just copy some blank cells over it, stretch this out to a width of 12, and uh, let's format all these cells to three decimal places and abbreviate some of the uh, notation. So I'm copying the abbreviations from my previous worksheet just to speed this up a little bit. This is uh, the significant, this is the p-value for the f-test, which we'll get to later. Okay, and let's uh, take our equation from before and see how it changed. So the regression equation now, I'm going to change the intercept, and the slope also changed just a little bit. Okay, so this is... Uh, 
what we have. New R squared, new S, you know, all the statistics changed a little bit. Uh, new intercept and new slope. Let's see how much they changed. We'll make a little table off to the side here to help us assess the impact of that outlier. So what I'll do is type a heading, regression st statistic. I'm making a little table here. I'll say with the outlier, so the, the regression analysis with the outlier, the regression analysis without the outlier, and uh, let's see how much these statistics change. So we'll calculate that as a percent change. Okay. Okay, so we want to uh, see B0, B1, R squared, and S, how they changed. So uh, without the outlier, we have these numbers right there. I'll just grab them from the, oops, I grabbed the wrong thing. B0 is right there. B1 is right there. Uh, R squared is right there. Notice there's no rounding error when I look at these cells, the values are uh, quite precise, although that precision doesn't mean too much. But anyway, there won't be any rounding error when I calculate my percent change. Now with the outlier, I'm grabbing uh, from this page. What I think I'll do is just copy this whole column down here and uh, paste it off to the side right here. Uh, so this is uh, B0 right there, and B1, oops, I did that in the wrong spot. Okay, with the outlier is right B0, B1, R squared is right there, and S was this number from that previous worksheet. Okay, and uh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> okay, I need to uh, copy over these, control C, paste special values and now I can delete this column and now I can calculate percent change. So to calculate percent change I'm going to um, compare what it is now without the outlier to what it was with the outlier. So I say equal what it is now minus what it was with the outlier divided by what it was and the percent change. Percent. Let's show one decimal place. Copy that formula down. Okay, so here's our uh, table that's telling us something about the impact of that outlier. So notice uh, the intercept and the slope hardly changed at all when I removed the outlier. But R squared went up by 15.6% or a little over 11 percentage points if I just take this minus that number. Um, S dropped substantially. It dropped nearly 29%. So that's what outliers do. They, uh, when you remove them, R squared goes up, S goes down. If it's only an outlier, the line itself is not affected too much. Now uh, we'll talk later about high leverage points and they have the potential to be more damaging, uh, especially to B0 and B1. Okay, so that's it for uh, this analysis on the impact of an outlier.